like, yeah, yeah, I guess so, because I can't, can't get it in the store. I did everything, everything he, he said, said, I can't get it in the store. I got it all the way here, here. I've got it. I must be going. I've got three people in there, but I cannot. Thank you. Don't lose faith in me. Don't lose faith in me. Right now. Right now. Right now. She's wonderful. Thank you. What's up, fellas? What's up? What's up? I'm here again by myself tonight. Because Dustin had to go somewhere again with his machines and company and all this good stuff. So, um, I'm here. Hanging out with you guys tonight alone, so kind of my wife is smart. <laughs> yeah, because my wife is smart, and she's got all this stuff working properly. Um, so thank you for coming in. We didn't put up a preview today because we weren't sure what was going on. I wasn't sure what Dustin. And tell me how you really. Do you really want to be on camera? Because if you do, I'll put you up here. Okay. Bye. Hey. Welcome to my world. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, I just appreciate all you guys for being here. Yes, the brains of the business is out because Dustin's not here tonight. And she helped get all this stuff and going. So thanks so much. I appreciate uh, all you guys that are here so far. Um, RC Plane Reviewer. What's up, Bobby? How you doing, man? Um, and I hope Jeff's in here somewhere, too. Yes. I don't, I don't know, know what mic to turn off. off. Pick one to turn off. I don't, I don't have, have a clue. clue. I'll turn, turn down the volume. volume. Maybe that'll yeah. work. How does it sound to you guys? Because I don't know. know. Anyway. Um, what's, what's up, Bobby? Uh, Jerry, Paul, George. What's, what's up, up, Shay? Michael Reiska. How are you? Um, if it sounds funny, funny guys, let me know. Um, <laughs> What's up, Craig? Yeah, yeah right. She, she got to go. go. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, guys, so I'm, I'm running solo tonight. Dustin's out of here. He's actually had to go pick up parts for one of his machines. Um, it's becoming a normal thing for him. It's killing me. Um, but I appreciate all you guys for being here and hanging out with me. So, that being said, let's get into it. And I won't keep you guys too long tonight. Um, Guys, L39 is done. It's completed. I'm going to try to slide it so you guys can see the incredible graphics on this thing. Um, I'll turn the computer for you. Let's actually turn the jet this way. And, uh, yeah, see what you guys think. Um, hope you guys can see this. It's turned out amazing. I'm very pleased. I think Eric's going to be pleased with it as well. He's coming this weekend all the way from Florida to pick this up. Slide a little further forward this way, a little that way. Um, 
Calligraphics, the old of this guy, she did a fantastic job. The pinstriping I did, and the paint job I did, everything else. But Callie did the dragon, and she did a fantastic job on that. And uh, so this will be maidened hopefully this coming Monday at our field by Eric himself. And I hope to be standing there with him and filming that. Thanks, Victor. I appreciate that, man. Um, it has, guys. It turned out very, very nice. Um, I'll show you the bottom so you can see that as well. Um, and I will also go on to show you guys the interior of this and the cockpit. Um, these magnets are strong, guys. As you can see, I painted the pilot's helmets blue to match the plane, inside silver, and uh, where they're sitting black. Turned out really nice. That looks really good. Um, I also I CG'd this jet, guys, for Eric with a 4,000 HRB and a 5,000 HRB. And I went in and put the lines inside the fuselage for the 4,000 and the 5,000. Now, what I had to do with that, guys, was I had to... The manual on this airplane called for a CG of 103 millimeters from this edge right here. And that would probably be, have been great had we not painted this plane. There is an afterburner in this plane, thanks to, I believe, Ray. Uh, so there's a Guniac in here. Also, I put tape, silver tape, in the tube of this airplane. Um, polyacrylic, uh, let's see, what else? I mean, you know, it's got a lot of added weight. Also, guys, I moved the blue box back, and I put another box of tray in for the receiver and the gyro as well. So, added just a little more weight, of course, with everything. So, that being said, that has moved the CG of this airplane from 103 millimeters to right on 120 millimeters aft of the leading edge. And uh, thanks, Craig. I appreciate that, man. Um, so the CG on it now is beautiful with a 4,000 and a 5,000 HRB. So that way he has an option of flying two different packs in here. And guys, I can't tell you, the metallic in this paint is beautiful in the natural sunlight outside. The lights in here don't do it any justice. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, so it's, it's turned out great, and I cannot wait to see him fly it. So I hope you guys will um, be there for the video once we get all that going. Um, and I, I will definitely be doing a video on this maiden and putting it up. So uh, how you doing, um, Shadow Jeff? What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? Good to see you. I'm glad you're in here tonight. Um, so I just, again, thank all of you guys for being here, hanging with me, because as I said, Dustin's not here, so I get a little nervous when I'm doing this by myself. So um, now, that being said, I'm going to move the L39, I'm going to get it out of the way, and I'm going to bring in the next project that we're starting on, and uh, I think you guys know what it is. So I'm going to get this out of the way, and set it over here. Hang on, I'll be right back. All right, all right, all right. So, it's been long awaited. And it's here. And I'm glad it's here because my decals are here. And we are starting on this project. And this is going to be none other than the amazing Stormtrooper scheme, guys, right here. It's going to look great. Tim, man... Thank you so much, buddy. I Look, man, you are awesome. Thank you so much, man. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that. It just it humbles me, man. And thank you so, so very much for that because it all goes right back into this. And I'm just glad to be here with you guys doing what I love and you guys make it all possible. So thank you so very much, Tim. I, I just can't tell you how much it means to me. Um, so... Now, what I'm doing, guys, you know, you've all given me flack for, what, over a year now about getting the 
AL-37 out of the box. Well, this out of the box. Cat's out of the bag. And I've, I've had the cockpit lit for a while. That's done. I also have lights that shine up on the um, vertical stabilizer, like floodlights, which are going to look awesome. When I put, yes, the Stormtrooper scheme on this awesome airplane, guys. Um, and what I am doing right now, this plane, I ordered it in total white. Because I knew I was going to do a scheme on it. So that being said, I've already got the receiver in. I've got the cockpit lid, as I said. And I've got the, the floodlight shining up on the vertical. So now what I'm doing is, just to give you an idea, I am custom designing carbon rod for this fuselage, guys. Because as we all know, this is a weak point And, you know... This, this has got to be addressed. So, the factory airplane comes with carbon rod, which I use a more durable, solid carbon rod that is the same diameter that's going to be going into these holes. This one's got to be cut down. So, we're going to put these in here. And then what we're using is these three-inch pieces. Because, guys, what you got to understand, this airplane is not this thick. All the way throughout so you get kind of thin back down in here and you don't have a lot to bite into with this so these are actually going to go here I'm gonna put one here I'm gonna put one here on this corner here on this corner I'm gonna put one in the top center maybe three across the top because this as we know is a weak point of this airplane it tends to flex I'm also going to use epoxy to put on here versus foam tack so this is the factory size, and then we're going to be going with this diameter of uh, hollow carbon rod because I won't, I won't light because this stuff is a little heavier. So I'm going to put one here, one here, 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 and here. And if that doesn't reinforce it, guys, I don't know what else is going to. Um, but, you know, some guys have talked about how the paint on this plane looks yellow. Mine does not. Mine looks very white. I almost hate to go over it, but I'm going to. I'm going to paint over it with a flat white primer, as, yes, as you guessed it. It's, it's going, going to be the Rust-Oleum uh, two, two times, times because that is an awesome paint. paint. I love it. Um, and it, it works, works very well on these models. models. And if you... Prime, Prime these planes, planes from, from a safe, safe distance, distance, you will not mess, mess up the foam. Also, what I'm going, going to do is somebody is texting me. Um, let's, let's see, see so some of the chat wondering. Uh, let's, let's see, who's, who's having problems? Because everything, everything seems to be working, working here. Can you, you guys, guys hear me? Everything, everything working okay, okay for you guys? Because someone, someone was just telling me that they were saying that some still have a problem. Let me, Let me catch, catch up, up on the chat, chat here, guys. So, uh, talk, talk to, to me. me. Everything, Everything looking good? From what, what I can tell, everything, everything seems, seems to be okay. okay. Um, I don't, I don't know. know. Um, from what, what I can tell, everything looks good. Let me see. see. Hey, hey Lewis, from, from what, what I can, can tell, tell, everything, everything looks good. good. Make, Make sure, sure you're on the right, right chat. chat. So, so that, that being, being said, said um, a friend of mine says he's having a problem, but from what, what I can tell, tell everything with you guys, guys seems to be okay. okay. Um, Michael, Michael says there's an echo, there's an echo. An echo. Okay, okay, so, so tell, tell me how to get rid of the echo, man. I'll be glad to do it. I'm not sure how. I'll turn down my computer or something that may help. I don't know. Um... Okay, okay, so, so what's, what's up, Jackson? Jackson? How, How you doing, buddy? Um, if that, that helped, help, guys, let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Let me tell me if that, that worked because I turned out my computer. computer. Um, hopefully, hopefully that'll, that'll work. Um, your mic, mic is picking up the sound from the speakers. Okay, then I just turned my computer, computer down. down. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know that I have two mics. I haven't changed anything since Dustin and I have done this. So, like I tell you guys, man, I'm just. I'm doing, doing the best, best I can. can. Um, <laughs> I, don't I don't know. know. Um, 
Any, any suggestions, suggestions or, or, or technique? Or technique? I, don't I don't know how, Michael. I, I would love, love to. to. Do I need to go into OBS? Because right, right, right now I'm on YouTube. Um, I, Jeff, Jeff, I don't, I don't know. know. Someone's texting me. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so if you guys, guys um, I'm trying to think if I click, click on... on Okay, okay, so, so let's see. Start, start recording. recording. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm looking, looking here. Let's see, see if, if I can, can do anything, anything different. different. Um, talk, talk to me, guys. guys. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm learning, learning here. here. I don't, I don't know. know. So... so I'm going to go back down to the chat. I'm trying to do all this. Normally Dustin does this stuff. Let's see, we're getting mic feedback almost as it gets camera mic and laptop mic. Okay. I don't know how to fix it. Again, last time I was live, everything is set the same way it was then too. Let me go to OBS. Okay, so I'm in OBS. Anybody know how to tell me how to change anything? Um, I got, I got desktop, desktop audio, audio mic, mic auxiliary, auxiliary, and video, video capture device. device. Anyone? Anyone? Because I, I just don't know. know. And, and let, let me go, go back to here to see you guys in the chat. Let's, Let's see your channel. channel. Okay, okay, so we got, got this here. Jeff, Jeff NC, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm in, in OBS, OBS now. I keep going back, back and forth from OBS because I'm on YouTube right, right now. Um, trying, trying to see your chat because in OBS, OBS I can't see the chat. chat. So, again, again I, don't I don't do this normally. <laughs> so, um, Dustin, Dustin does, does all this stuff. stuff. So, hey, Lewis, what's, what's up, buddy? Yeah, yeah I, hear I hear the echo, echo now, now, guys. So if anybody, anybody can tell me how, how to change it, it I, will. I will. Because it, it does have, have a lot of feedback, feedback and I, I get it. it. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm, I'm so, so confused. confused. I don't, I don't do this stuff, guys. I'm telling you, man. I don't, I don't do this. this. Yeah, yeah, I do, do need, need to ask the wife, Tony Michael. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's sad, sad, isn't it? Um, studio controls. Anybody, Anybody can, can tell, tell me how, how to do this, do this on OBS, I'll, I'll be glad, glad to. Because I don't, don't know how. Um... Hang on. Hello. Hello. You know. Not. Yeah. 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 I don't know what I did. I just, I just, I just did my own life, man. I'm, I'm back. back. I'm, I'm not, not even alive now. No. no. I don't know what I'm talking about. No. no. I'm not, I'm not even alive anymore. anymore. I'm, turning I'm turning it up. up. The camera's pointing up. Point up. I 
I should try that one out please. This, this is the one you should, should be on. Guys, yeah, are you still there? It's my lovely nose. I'm thumbs up. Guys, are you still there? It's my lovely nose. I'm thumbs up. Guys, are you still there? It's my lovely nose. I'm thumbs up. Guys, are you still there? It's my lovely nose. I'm thumbs up. Guys, are you still there? It's my lovely nose. I'm thumbs up. Yeah, hey, Ray, what's, what's up, man? So is it still Echo? Yeah, hey, Ray, what's up, man? So is it still Echo? Hang on, guys. Yeah, hey, Ray, what's up, man? So is it still Echo? Yeah, hey, Ray, what's up, man? So is it still Echo? Yeah, hey, Ray, what's up, man? So is it still Echo? Yeah, hey, Ray, what's up, man? So is it still Echo? Yeah, hey, Ray, what's up, man? So is it still Echo? Yeah, hey, Ray, what's up, man? So is it still Echo? Yeah, hey, Ray, what's up, man? So is it still Echo? Yeah, hey, Ray, what's up, man? So Hey guys, can you still hear? Still reverbing. Hey Greg, what does it sound like now, man? Can you hear me better now? Is everything better? Let me know. Talk to me. me. Somebody, Somebody, please. please. <laughs> Anyone. Anyone. Anybody. Anybody. Bueller. Bueller. Still, Still an echo. echo. Then I, don't I don't know what to do, man. man. Echo is okay. Thanks, Thanks Eric. Eric. I appreciate, I appreciate it, man. man. But... <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have, have a clue, clue man. man. I, wish I wish I knew what to do about it, fellas. I don't, I don't know. know. We, we had, had two streams going, going at one time, time I, think, I think, and we can't one. So. All right, George. George. Thank, Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate it, guys. guys. So, 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 anyway. anyway. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry it's echoing, echoing guys. guys. I don't, I don't know, know what the problem is. is. Um, like I said, Dustin's not here. You have one on one screen or mic. I've got, I've got it on, on uh, Ray, Ray, I've got, got it on OBS, OBS in the background, and then I've got YouTube running as well. well. So I'm, I'm looking at YouTube, YouTube so I can see the chat, chat OBS, OBS in the background. So, um, it's a bad ass, ass trip. trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 oh, 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 you, 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 do it, do it, do it. Yeah, it's bad, bad for me too. too. Um, Lewis, I wish I knew how, buddy. It ain't that easy. This is not what I do, man. I don't normally produce the show. Dustin does. So I'm doing the best I can, man. Um, mute YouTube. Where? Tell me where. I'll be glad to mute YouTube. Where at? Where do I need to go? 
Talk, Talk to, to me, Eric. Eric. Tell me where to click, click on. <laughs> Talk, talk, talk to, 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 to me, me, Mr. Spock. <laughs> <laughs> What's, What's up, up Kyle, Ryan? Ryan? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? right? I, don't I don't know where, where to. to. If, if I did, I, did, I, would, I, would, I would mute it. it. Picture. What picture? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, about um, Michael. Michael. Screen, man, but where's Mike Mute? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I, don't I don't do this. this. <laughs> I can kill Dustin right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing, seeing you know, stream health, viewer activity, analytics. I get that, Ray, but I don't know where to do that, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, if I knew where to do that at, I'd be glad to mute it. <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm trying. trying, you know, know I, 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 I can't, can't, you know. know. Start giving me nothing. Okay, okay, so, so anyway, anyway, as I was, as saying, I was guys, saying, guys, this, this is basically, is basically I'm, working I'm working on, on reinforcing, reinforcing, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry about, about the reverb. Nobody, nobody can see can tell me where to go to change, to change this. this. Um, um, you know, you know and, and, I, and I can't figure it out. Figure it out. So anyway, so anyway, just, just. Act like Act you're like on acid, acid and play, and play along. along. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so anyway, so anyway and hit, and that, hit that, that damn like button. button. You know, you know give, give it a thumbs, thumbs up. up. You're, you're having fun. fun. That's, That's all that matters. Um, um, you're just you're hearing, just hearing everything, everything twice. twice. <laughs> um, um, so what so I'm what doing here, here, as I said, said is we're putting, we're putting in more carbon reinforcement around the fuselage. And then I will be using epoxy. To hold, to hold this together, together and, and to get, to get it, it to, to be more, be more secure, secure so it's not so, not so flimsy. That's, That's the main, main goal right, right now. now. Um, and I'm going to be flying this on this five, five, five to six thousand. thousand. Um, so, so, you know. You know. Turn, turn camera, camera up, up again. again. What, what the, the hell? hell? Is that what you want to do? I don't know. I don't know. Hold on, hold on, guys. Give me a minute. Camera, what do you want me to do, man? It is. It is.
Okay, so you, can you guys hear me better now? Is it still echoing? Is it reverbing? Talk to me, because I and I don't even see the okay. chat now. Deuce has said it's thick. Perfect. Ray said perfect. Better. Go figure. No echo. Go figure. Okay, good. Coming down. So you, ah, not yet. Get some more of that Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry. I can't get out of the Mr. Chit Chow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, tell me if that's better. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now, anyone? Anyone? Is that better? What do we got? Is the echo gone now? I believe it is. Thank you, Ray. Yeah. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> Fuck Ray. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, George. <laughs> thank you, George. Thank you, George. George, Tara said thank you. <laughs> That's my money. <laughs> she said, it's all her money. It's all her money. <laughs> hey. hey, thank you, man. I appreciate that, buddy. Like I said, she's my techie. I've never denied it. I've always owned it. It is what it is, man. Um and you know, George, uh, George, look, Dustin normally does this stuff, and if he can't, she does, and she steps in, and she'd be doing it every week for me, but Dustin's normally here, so um, she is prettier than Dustin, I must say, so, but, you know, hey, we do what we do. So, <laughs> that being said, thank you guys so much for the technical difficulties and, and, and helping us, and uh <laughs> Yes, I'm blushing. Um, so yeah, it's it's. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't like having to deal with all this stuff. But thank you guys for bearing with us and hanging out. So yes, Roy, we will go fancy like Applebee's. <laughs> um, bougie as it would be like Applebee's. Um, but so yeah, so guys, so you know, I've, I've seen several people in the forums that have complained about the paint. On their AL, and I'm telling you, man, the paint on mine is really nice. Um, yeah, George, I am sweating, um, and I cannot complain. Mine is not yellow; it's white. It looks good. I hope you guys can see it in here. I mean, you know, this is plastic, and compared to this, it really everything looks nice. I've heard some guys complaining about paint peeling. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I'm going to sand this, and then I'm going to spray it with primer. Um, another thing is, like I said, I'm going to be spackling certain areas, especially where the fuselage is put together to get it smooth so I don't have to use the tape, you know, that they send with it. Um, I've got the wings and everything laid out over here. Um, the flaps on this particular plane, if you guys have it, let me grab one and I'll show it to you. You'll know what I'm talking about. Let's see. All right, so on one of the flaps on this airplane, guys, as you can see, you could right in here, you can see almost like a, uh, a carbon carbon rod running through here. I don't want to see that either, so I'm going to be filling that in and sanding that smooth like this side, so it looks like this side. These move really nicely. Um, if there are any of you guys out there that have not seen this airplane in person, it's very nicely put together. Uh, you've got really super nice hinges here. Hope you guys can see this. Um, I think I did an unboxing on this airplane, but you've got really nice hard points on this airplane. Nice, big, beefy hinges. Ball link clevises. Um, you got your gear, of course. This is where your nacelle will be in this area. Um, you have your wing strip 
plug right here, um, which I will take this off, guys, and I'm going to check all these connections just to make sure that they're all good. Carbon rod here, and this plane also comes with a large carbon rod that will go in here to connect the wings. But you can see how well and how nicely these hinges move. I mean, I'm, I mean, it's just falling on its own. Um, and this linkage right here will be kind of inside this groove, kind of a hidden linkage. So that's pretty cool. So I'm really looking forward to getting this plane together and getting all the decals. I'll be putting silver along the leading edge to really make it look more realistic. Um, this is going to be a fun build, guys. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to this. Um, what I'm going to do first is I will be getting, uh, hey Jeff, thank you man, if you're still here, thank you buddy, I, I just saw that super chat, thank you so much man, I, and I hope you are still here, I really appreciate that buddy, thumbs up to you and, and bless you man, that's, that's awesome of you, um, but what I'll be doing guys, I'm going to get it sanded once I get it, uh, you know, sealed up good where the fuselage connects together with epoxy i'll be going in there and getting a nice good fit then i'm going to sand it lightly paint it with flat white primer which is this very primer right here just like i did with the l39 that you guys have seen earlier tonight this is a wonderful paint guys then i will be putting a uh probably a couple of coats of satin polyacrylic on here just to give it just a little bit of better slide um, with paints and things like that and once I get that done then I will start actually applying the black and white paints and things like that to really make this thing come to life if you have seen the stormtrooper scheme guys part of the plane is black part of it's white under the belly there's some black and around the front of it it looks like a stormtrooper's face, but that's all decals. The whole back end of the plane is a stormtrooper. Um, again, I'll show you. This is a 1-400 scale model. I'll break this open and show you. Hey, Bobby, what's up, man? Tell Jeff I said thank you so much for that super chat, man. That was so very kind of him. I thank you so much. And, guys, I'm sorry I couldn't get to Kinston last weekend. My son had lacrosse. And, well, Bobby, you've got children, and Jeff does too. And I know Jeff plays travel ball, so you guys know how it goes. And, you know, we, we're going to Charlotte, North Carolina this weekend, and then next weekend we're going to Charleston, South Carolina, for a lacrosse tournament. So any of you guys that have kids, you know how it works with these travel teams. Um, but, guys, what I was going to do is show you this is a die-cast model of the plane that I'm going to be painting and and doing the decals and I hope you guys can see this I'll put my hand behind it maybe it'll focus better this is really nice looking you see the stormtrooper um, Callie has done a fantastic um, scheme for this airplane it looks really really nice and uh, underneath you can see the belly of the plane looking at it straight on it looks like a stormtrooper um, it's going to look really, really nice, guys, and I can't wait. I will be doing the silver underneath the wings. I'm going to do it exactly like this replica because it is true to scale. It looks just like the real one, and everything will look identical to this one. So I'm going to be putting video out on this as well, and I hope you guys will check that out and follow it with me. Um, and, you know, along the way, guys, we're all kind of watching each other and what we do. We all learn from each other. And uh, Brendan McCormick has done some beautiful AL-37s. He did a Pixar scheme, and he also did a Jurassic Park scheme, and he did an amazing job. And um, I'm going to be using some of his tips and techniques along the way and showing you guys how we do this and what it will look like. Um in case you guys have not seen these in person, this is one of the nacelles from this airplane. If you can see down the pipe, show you from the back side. These are really nice looking as well, but I'm going to make them look better. They're going to look great when I get through with them. Uh, so, again, that's both of those. I mean, very impressed by the construction of this airplane. Of course, it is a free wing 
and we all know what that means. Uh, quality is great. So um, I'm gonna have a lot of fun. Um, Lewis uh, Cali Graphics did the decals for me on this plane. Cali Graphics does a lot of our airplanes. What Cali doesn't do for me, my wife does um, on a lot of my planes because Tara can make these graphics as well. But we just don't have a plotter or a computer big enough to do stuff of this scale or the color that Cali Graphics does. So if you're needing something that looks really, really awesome or different, look at Cali Graphics. She can just about do anything for you. The sheet of decals for this airplane, guys, was about three feet wide and about six feet long. And it's full of decals cost me 75 bucks and Cali did a phenomenal job on those so um, if you need something please check out Cali graphics and she can fix you up um, what's up Jeff how you doing buddy and yeah I hope to see you guys man on the 23rd we will be having our fly in here at Coburn Field um, on October the 23rd it's a Saturday if you want to get here Friday evening hang out camp out you're more than welcome to um, also, guys, if you um, you know want to check out our website, it's NorthCarolinaSpaceCowboys.org. Please check it out. Lewis has done a phenomenal job on our website. He also has RC News for other clubs in the area that are telling what they're doing. Um, and he's also got a lot of good information and tips. We're going to be putting stuff up there with the paints that I've done on the L39 and things like that. So definitely... Check out NorthCarolinaSpaceCowboys.org and you'll see our website and our field and a lot of things we've got going on. So check that out and be here for our fly-in October the 23rd. Now, um, it was, let's see, who asked me a question? Um, let's see, I saw it up here. Okay, so Craig Beaven. Craig, here's the thing, man. If you use a spray paint like the Rust-Oleum Times 2, the paint itself is not what melts the foam, Craig. It's the propellants in the can. So that being said, anytime you spray an airplane, you're better off to do one of two things. Either paint it first with a coat of polyacrylic like such. I'm going to show you the can. This is the can of polyacrylic right here, Craig. This is a, a semi-gloss, okay? This paint will go a long way. Use this in a foam brush, and I think you know what I'm talking about by a foam brush. Do one to two coats on the entire airplane and all the parts for the airplane with this first. If you will use this first on your airplane before you paint it, it will not melt your foam. With that being said, you can spray your plane with a spray paint such as just be sure, hold it back far enough and the propellants will not melt your foam. It's one of those things where you can use a spray paint without polyacrylic, but you just got to hold it back far enough. If you polyacrylic first, your spray paint will not mess up your foam, just so you know. Um... So it's a matter of however you want to do it. Um, you can also use a spray polyacrylic because I have some of that over there as well. But again, you're running into propellants in the can. It's what actually messes with your foam. It's not the paint. It is the propellant that will melt your foam. So just stay back off of it far enough use light coats. Now once you get a good co a, a good light coat of paint on your airplane, you don't have to worry about melting your foam. It's that first initial coat of paint with the propellants that will melt your foam. That's why polyacrylic will protect it and keep that from happening. Um, so it's just a good practice. I love polyacrylic and it also makes your foam denser. It keeps it from uh, dinging as bad, from getting hanger rash as bad. Um, it just works really well in protecting your foam all the way around, putting them in your trailers, things like that, in your car. So polyacrylic's awesome, guys, if you haven't ever used it. And you can get that at Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart sells it. Um, 
I'm sure just about any place that sells paint has it. So definitely check that out. And um, I put it on just about every airplane, regardless of whether I paint it or not. I put polyacrylic on it to protect the foam from hanger rash, period. Um, so, once I get one coat of white all over this plane, then I will start painting the black. And I will tape off everything that where the black will be. I'll get the black on it, and once all that is said and done, then I will probably start putting the rear decals on the vertical and horizontal because those are the two biggest with the Stormtrooper, as you guys saw with the airplane. Um, now, another thing you guys may say, well, how, how did you light up the vertical stabilizer and how did you light up the cockpit? Okay, well... As we all know, in these airplanes, there are blue boxes. Yes, the dreaded blue box. But, that being said, the blue box is awesome for a couple of reasons. It has numerous places on there for extra lights, should you choose to put them on an airplane. These planes come with a lot of lights. But most of your blue boxes have extra inputs if you want to add lights some of them flash, some of them strobe, some of them do nothing but light up. You just got to play with them and figure out what does what. So, that being said, I've got a light on each side of the vertical stabilizer in the rudder that lights up the vertical just like a billboard. It's like two floodlights that shine up on it. I have a wire coming off of each light. Well, they run all the way to the fuselage, and then I have a... Y cable as we all know and love and it is just a regular Y cable that I made with a female on one end and two males on the other. Now this will plug in to my blue box. These two will plug in to my lights on my rudders. Okay? That will light those up. And there is a spot on the box that is just a constant light which is all I want. That's where this will go. My cockpit same thing. There is another light inside here that runs back this way to the blue box and it plugs in to another port that is just a constant light. Again, giving me nothing but constant light for this cockpit because you don't want your cockpit to flash, you don't want it to strobe. So that's how you light up these areas in these airplanes. All these blue boxes have these spaces in them guys. And if you can wire up some you know, harnesses and, and wire leads and get your ends, you can buy these at Motion or Horizon, solder them on. They're like JST plugs. You can have lights just about anywhere you want them. So, you know, those blue boxes are good for something, believe it or not. Because what they do is your blue boxes step down your power. As we all know, LED lights can only take so much power. If you give them too much power, you're going to, you're going to blow them. Um, yes, Reckham Roy, it is water-based polyacrylic. Yes, it is, so it's easy cleanup as well. But as we all know, your LED lights are typically going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of what? Um, four to five volts. And your receivers run off of six, 7.4 volts sometimes on up. So that being the case, if you power your LEDs with that much power, you're going to blow them and they're no good. So you need a step down, kind of like a potentiometer. Your blue box is just that. Your blue box takes the power from your battery and it steps it down to a power that your LED lights can handle. And that's why they're wonderful for these particular types of leads and for your wires to plug into so you can have lights wherever you want them, and you can make them do pretty much whatever you want to do. Um, they work great. And, uh, you know, I've, I've done a lot of planes with different lighting schemes, and I put a blue box actually in my Carbon T28 for the lights on it because I wanted lights, and I just run everything to a blue box that came in like a MiG-29, I think, that I bought off of Motion for 20 bucks put it in the plane that's all I used it for was lights it plugs right in it's real simple so um, again if you want lights on something 
Do not use the power straight out of your receiver. If you do, you're going to blow your lights. You've got to step that power down. A blue box works perfectly for that. It's plug and play, and then you can plug your lights into it. Just make sure your blue box has got numerous ports on it, as most of your jets do, for different lighting types. So definitely check that out. Um, Deuces says, now be aware of one thing with Minwax Polyacrylic. You will need to apply to an unpainted foam. It will yellow over time. You know what, Mike? I haven't had any yellow myself, but then again, man, I don't leave my planes in the sun if they're not being flown. Um, a lot of that's got to do with UV, and the only times my planes see UV is when they're in the air. Other than that, man, my planes are sitting in the shade on the ground, and a lot of you guys probably don't have that um, uh, opportunity, especially if you don't have shade at your field. But we do. We've got a nice covered area. So the only time my planes are exposed to sunlight, even my black, like my F-16 that's done in Arctic camo, my Spitfire that has black, the only times, only times my planes see sunshine is if they are actually in the air or taxiing up and down the runway. Other than that, they're in the shade. They're covered up. I don't leave them out. So if you're going to worry about polyacrylic yellowing, I haven't really had that problem with mine, but again, I do keep it in the shade when it's not being flown. Um, and, you know, and yeah, you know, Victor, the two times clear is good. My wife and I do a lot of woodworking projects as well, and we use different components for woodworking from uh, lacquers to polyacrylics to um, uh, what is it, spar varnish, which is also a water based product. You know, and, and there are a lot of products out there that, that will not yellow in the sun, but you're going to pay a ton of money for them. So the question is, how long does it take for something to yellow, if it's going to yellow? Um, from what I've seen and found on my airplanes, it takes a long time of UV exposure, of which I do not give my airplanes. So, you know, um, that's just me. Let's see. Took about five years before yellowing started on a noticeable on my cub. So the slow process and yes, and the sun rays. Exactly, Deuce is so true. Um, Michael Reiska says, uh, Victor, I found three a three times water based ver varithane at Home Depot because it seems to go. And that's true. That's kind of like the spar urethane, Michael. Um, it's a water based pro product too that low sells. That works really good. It's a lot like polyacrylic, but they call it spar urethane. Um, the thing is, guys, anything you can put on these airplanes because they are foam to make them as close to a composite as you can get them, the better off you're going to be for nothing else other than hangar rash. Um, even if you're not planning on painting an airplane, like for instance, prime example, my F7F Tiger Cat, it is a flight line. It's a flat blue. I like the flat blue, whereas the FMS comes factory with more of a shinier finish. Personally, me, I like the flat on the flight line. That being said, I put flat, and they make an ultra flat as well, polyacrylic on my F7F Tiger Cat. You cannot even tell it's been put up there and looking at the color of it, but you can feel the foam feel the airplane it doesn't ding as bad the blue paint doesn't get chipped off as bad if you bump it into something it just makes your foam denser it makes your paint more protected it keeps you from banging it up as bad now if i wanted it to be shinier like the fms version of the f7f tiger cat i could have gone with say a satin uh which is going to give you a decent amount of shine without giving you a super gloss I personally don't like my warbirds to be super glossy. Everybody has a personal preference. So if you wanted your Flightline F7F to have a shinier finish like the FMS, a lot of initials here, you could use a, a satin and it would give you that amount of shine. So, you know, and again, guys, if you're using polyacrylic on a, on a colored airplane, not white, if you're using it on a colored airplane, you're not going to see any yellowing even over time because the, the airplane is colored. It's not white. The only time you're going to see yellowing, if you see it at all, will be on white surfaces, truthfully. Um, 
And so Roy says he likes them really glossy. And yeah, man, I mean, Roy, that's a personal preference, buddy. It all depends on what you like and what suits your fancy. Um, some guys like them really shiny. Some don't. It, it, every plane and every person is different. So um, I've seen shiny stuff and looks really good. Um, let's see. Michael says, yes, Roy, I use the paint on. It's nice and thick and runs much. Exactly. That's another thing, guys, with any of these paints, uh, you want to make sure you don't get any runs. Um, would towels help that issue? Yeah, I mean, Craig, the thing of it is, you know, FMS, like for your Warbirds, I have these silk stretchy covers. I guess it's silk. It's probably not silk, but it's like a rayon. But I have the covers that FMS sells like on Banggood and... Um, I think Hobby King may even sell them, but they, they fit on your airplanes and they'll go up to pretty decent sized planes because they do stretch. But they just, they cover your plane, they help with sun exposure, things like that, and they work really good and they're like 10 bucks. Um, so, you know, those work really good, but yeah, towels, a sheet, anything you can throw over your airplane versus it sitting in direct sunlight is going to help tremendously. That's the reason, guys, that they've gone to the plastic insides in the cockpits is because the cockpits gator first because of the heat buildup inside the canopy. So if you notice most of your airplanes that are foam inside the canopy, they, they gator terribly. That's why they switched over to plastic inside those is because of the gatoring. But yes, if you can throw an, a towel, a sheet, Anything over your airplane, if it's sitting in the sun, you won't have that problem, and it makes all the difference in the world. So, yeah, Craig, good question. Um, let's see, Roy, I'm not saying you were by yourself with a great host. Hey, man, thanks, Roy. I appreciate it, buddy. I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to keep you guys entertained, man. That's all it is. Um, let's see, Chuck Pierce said, have you experimented with airbrush and latex paints? I have good results after getting dilution. Yeah, Chuck, it is all about dilution, man. Um, and also, polyacrylic guys will spray well through an airbrush. If it's diluted properly, you have to use the right things to dilute it with. Um, but yeah, Chuck, um, I like to take latex paints and run it through a strainer that they make for paint to get any of the clumps out of it, and then get your water to paint ratio really good. And yeah, you can use latex paints. They work great. Um also, it depends on your sprayer. Um, you know, I have uh, a Fuji sprayer that I can spray a car with if I want to, and then I have my airbrushes. Uh, a Fuji sprayer is a high-volume, low-pressure sprayer that runs off of a turbine system, and they work phenomenally well for painting, you know, big things like this fuselage or for painting a chair or a piece of furniture, uh, cabinet doors or anything. They work great. Um... Let's see, deuces. I wouldn't advise polycrylic coating on the black paint surfaces as it accumulates imperfections. This is true. It, well, you got to understand, guys. Here's the thing: anything that gives off more reflection, which means shine, is going to show more imperfections. Prime example: if you paint the walls of your house inside your house with flat paint, you're not going to see crappy sheetrock work. If you paint your walls with high gloss paint in your house, and your sheetrock guy did crappy work, it's going to show every imperfection such as nail heads, tape seams, bad sanding joints. That's why they paint most walls and ceilings in a house with flat paint. Flat paint is non-reflective, therefore does not show imperfections nowhere near as bad as a reflective paint such as a high gloss paint. If you ever notice, a black car shows more imperfections than a white car, and they're both brand new. Why is that? Because a black car is more like a mirror. It gives more reflection. A white car accepts light, so therefore you don't see the imperfections and the swirl marks and the scratches that you do in a black paint. That's the reason. The darker the paint, the more reflection you get. The lighter the paint, the more it accepts light. Same thing with what I do every day for a living, guys, with hair color. It all works the same. Color is color. It doesn't matter if it's on a car or on somebody's head. It all works the same. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. You know, Lewis, I mean, I've had no problem with adhesion at all on anything. Um, you know, good paint is everything. You, you buy cheap paint, you're going to get cheap work. Um, and if your plane is prepped correctly, like this plane right here, for instance, 
If I were going to paint this plane right now, I would take alcohol and I would wipe it down totally to get any releasing agent off of the plane. Um, I wipe it down really thoroughly with alcohol. And what that's going to do is make your paint stick really well. So, again, another great question. But always wipe your planes down with alcohol prior to spray painting them because it's going to give you better adhesion with your paint. So that's a very good question. Thank you, Lewis. I appreciate that. Um, uh, let's see. I've, I've learned to use high gloss only on light color and to use clear satin. Exactly. Um, if if you want, you know, um, if you want a high gloss, then you're better to use that on a lighter color. And if you use, you know, your satins on darker colors, you won't see so many foam imperfections and just anything that you know, such, such as uh, where your gear want to protrude through your wing. Any of those things you won't see as bad. So that's very true. Um, Chuck Pierce says, I've had trouble getting Cali decals to stick well to flat paint. I didn't hit the paint with the overcoat of WBPA. But let me tell you something, Chuck. This is what I do. Even on the L39 you guys saw earlier. Put your decals on. And then, what's up, Brendan? How you doing, buddy? Appreciate you coming by, man. Always a pleasure. Take you. I have a, a large monocoat iron that I do... You know, when I used to do a lot of monocoat balsa planes and stuff, put that iron around number one, which is a low heat setting. If you will put your graphics on your airplane, if they're not adhering well, take that iron and put a paper towel on the plane and start to rub the iron on the decal. And what that does is that makes the glue activate and it makes it stickier. And that glue will adhere to that paint better and then take your your hand and rub that sticker down really well and you'll be amazed at how much better that sticker will actually stick with heat applied from the iron rubbing it down than not using it. Now the next thing if you ever have water decals or stickers that want to start peeling up after several flights I'll tell you the best thing in the world for that. Dollar Tree I think or Dollar Store, I'm not, it's one of the two because they're both different stores. They sell a matte Mod Podge, guys. If you will get some of this matte Mod Podge, and it comes in a bottle that is this size right here. It comes in this size, which is a two-ounce bottle, okay? Take some of this on a paintbrush, just like so, okay? Just a paintbrush, just like this. Dip it in. If you will go around the edges of your decals like this, what will happen, the Mod Podge will dry totally clear, but it will seal down the edges of your decals. You'll never see it, and your decals will not lift up again. It's amazing stuff, and it's like a dollar a bottle, and a bottle will last you almost forever. So, Mod Podge Matte is what you need. Those things, it works incredibly well, guys. To hold down any decals that are starting to lift or peel, if the heat method does not make them stick down, Mod Podge will. And it dries pretty quickly. And once it dries, it's gone. You don't see it. You can paint over it if you like. It's great stuff. So um, try that. And yeah, Ray, uh, you can have a soft cloth. I like to use a paper towel. It works good. The irons come with the sock. Um, they, they have those as well. Um, and Ray says they sell a spray stuff like the Mod Podge as well. I just like brushing it on with a brush. Um, Brendan at Just Plain Crazy says, when installing Cali Graphics, spray bottle with two drops of dish soap? Yes, sir. Alcohol? Yes. So true, guys. That's exactly right. I did the same thing on the L39 that Brendan said do. The decals gave me time to not only stick them, they did not adhere so fast. I could move them around if I needed to, just like a water slide, as I told you guys. Um, I did a video on this as well. I haven't posted it yet, but Brendan is right. It gives you time to work. And then, as the water dries out from behind the decal, the decal will start to adhere. If you will also go back, like I said, with a little bit of heat from your iron, that will help dry the water, dissipate the water, and your glue will activate and stick down the decal. Works perfect. Those decals on that L39 look phenomenal. There's not a bubble anywhere. They went around every crease everywhere, man. So, yeah, works great. And uh, exactly what Brendan is saying. Um, 
I also use a small amount of foam tack. Yeah, you can do that as well. It works great. If you can be really careful with it, put it on a small, maybe like um, orange wood stick like these. Um, some of my orange wood sticks, because my wife does fingernails, have a flat end, guys, as you can see here. They work really well. Just clean it off when you're done, and you'll have that for a while. The other end of those is pointed, in case you need your pointed end. Um, and that's just an orange wood stick for pushing back cuticles on fingernails. Um, they work really nicely. Um, but the Mod Podge, for me, with a paintbrush, spot on. And, it, and, it, and it's clear and works really good. Um, so, yeah. And, and again, Brendan, the, the tape with the um, baby powder. Again, huh, check it out. Boom. Baby powder, guys. If you don't want your paint to peel when you're spray painting an airplane take you some of this baby powder put it on a paper towel rub your plane with it use a low tack tape tape it up spray paint it your tape will come off without peeling your paint and also you'll have crisper super nice lines because the tape keeps your paint from bleeding under the tape awesome awesome revolutionary idea i love it man um that's one of the best that's that's like the idea of 2021 brendan i mean that should get an award man that makes life so much easier um <laughs> what do you say she do your toenails too um no nah, i do that man we break out the grinder for those man <laughs> the dremel tool um yeah the yellow frog tape works good now i've got the lavender tape this is um this is actually a very low tack. This came from Lowe's. Um, and it is a Scotch brand. And it's called Delicate Surface is what that is. That, that tape works really, really well. And with the baby powder, psh, I'm telling you, man, it will not peel your paint, guys. So definitely, definitely try that trick. It works really nicely. So, yeah, so that's what's going on. I can't wait to get the L39 uh, in the air. Hopefully Monday we're going to get uh, my friend from Florida will be here. And we're going to get the maiden of the L39. Be videotaping that for you guys. It's all dialed in. It's ready to go. All he's got to do is maiden it. And then, like I said, this is the next prize possession. Um, this one will be coming along. It's been in the box for a long time. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Gonna be a, it's going to be a fun project, man. I can't wait to get this one um, up in the air. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, Brendan said, I wanted to just see for myself if Polly was better than Maj. Yeah, I mean, hey, man. Who knows? I mean, the thing that I like about the Maj Podge is it just it's easy cleanup as well. Water cleanup, and it dries very quickly. That's another thing I liked about it as well. Um Let's see, Deuces said we're slowly running out of perfect flying weather. Yeah, but you know, Deuces, here in North Carolina, man, we're having some perfect days. It was like 85 here today. The nights are cooler, but it warms up during the day, so it's really nice. Um, look back a couple of comments. Well, let's see. Did you have a derivative test with Mod Podge versus Poly? Believe it or not, the Poly wore a lighter coat and held up. Okay, all right, cool. Well, good to know, man. Hey, I'll definitely try that, Brennan. I'm all over it, man. Good to know. Polly, awesome. Polly was lighter coat and coat for held up better. Hey, good to know. Well, you know, Brendan, I went over all of the L39 decals with two coats of gloss poly, and everything looks phenomenal on that airplane because I followed a lot of what you said to do on the AL37s that you've done. I did the uh, L39 many of your techniques and ways, and it worked very nicely, so thank you for that. Um, love learning from all of you guys. I have a uh, friend of mine. You guys have seen him in the chat. It's um, TC um, RC Creations, and he is sending me some 3D printed wheel covers for the L39, the F14, the MiG29, um, several different airplanes. He does a lot of 3D printing, guys, and I can't wait to get those. He just sent me uh, an email today and told me that. Um, they're in the mail. They should be here soon. So we'll be putting them on the L39, and I can't wait. And uh, looking forward to that. Come here, boo. Come here, say hey. Come here. Up, 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 up. Come on. 
Say, hey, everybody. Here's my buddy. Say, hey, can you tell him hey? Say, hey. Hey there. Tell him hey. <laughs> it's my co-pilot. There he is. <laughs> Had to make an appearance, guys. He's my buddy. Um, but, yeah, uh, so that's, you know, TC at, um, you know, TC Creations RC. He does some great work. Matter of fact, we have been, um, it's TCAT RC Creations. His name is Tom, guys. And um, he's, he's just sending me a lot of stuff, and I can't thank him enough. I appreciate everybody in this hobby that we all help each other out, and that's just what makes it fun. It makes it exciting. Um, and, I mean, it just helps us all get better at what we do. Uh, let's see. Anyone here have old 6S F4 Free Wing Phantom or Fly One? F4 Free Wing Phantom. I have... I have my F I have my F four Brendan, but mine is an eight S setup. Um, it's right here over my head. It's the free wing in the camo scheme and I love it. Um but again mine is the eight S setup. Um I think all the guys that our field had the eight S and did not go with the six S because that is a heavy bird and we fly off grass. And so, therefore, it needed all the giddy-up and go it could get. Um, so, the 8S flies really well. And I'm flying two 5,000 4S uh, high-performance admirals in mine as well. Um, just got one. State sale wonder. It flies incredibly well. One thing I will tell you, Brendan, is to change out the servo for the elevator. Um, that is a weak servo in there, and all of us have all had failures and been luckily, uh, luckily saved our airplanes. Um, but that free wing servo is not good in that airplane, so we all switched out to high techs, as I know you love, and we all went with a better um, clevises and better. Uh, we also use carbon rod on the linkage. Because, I mean, you know, that's a full flying stab, man. And it, it, that plane needs all the reinforcement it can get. It's a heavy airplane in the air. You'll, you'll feel it. It flies very heavy. So definitely change out the servo and reinforce the linkage. And you'll have a great flying airplane. It flies really, really well. And, yes, it is worth upgrading. Um, definitely upgrade it. If you're flying off grass, and I believe you do, you will definitely want to upgrade that airplane to an 8S. Um, let's see. Just got one. Uh, da, da, da. Storage. Okay. We'd love to build tips for sites. Yeah, guys. So my friend Lewis is putting the uh, links up here. Um, and he's building tips. Anything that you'd like to put on our website. For our field and uh, North Carolina Space Cowboys, definitely send them to the email of which he has put up here. Thank you, Lewis, for dropping that in. Appreciate that. And uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm telling you, Brendan, you'll love that F-4, man. It's a great flying airplane. Um, like I said, all the guys at our club have got it, and we all love it. Everybody flies the camo, though. Nobody has the gray ghost, believe it or not. But let me tell you one thing about that airplane, Brendan. It will cloak on you in a heartbeat. Certain times of day, certain positions in the sky, it'll disappear, man. And you're going, okay, where's my orientation? Be careful with it because it will bite you fast. Um, that's one thing. Every guy that flies that plane in our field, it, it disappears in certain ways. And it cloaks. And it's like, for a second, you cannot tell the orientation, so just be careful. Keep it close enough where you can see it good. All right. All right, fellas. Well, look, man. I think I'm going to let you guys get out of here. Please hit the thumbs up if you've had a good time tonight. Um, if you haven't, as Brennan would say, hit the thumbs down twice. Algorithms love it regardless of what you do. I just appreciate all of you for being here. And, um, and yeah, Lewis, Frank does have a gray ghost, but um, he got it from Brian, actually, but I don't know when he'll be flying it. I hadn't heard him say anything about it. Um, great tip, Jeff. Thanks, please. Hear me with what you do. Okay, yeah, I mean, Brandon, the main thing is I just went with the 8S system and uh, put upgraded fan and everything and ESC in it for that. 
Um, that's really all I did. Uh, and the servo was a high tech and I upgraded the linkage for that servo with better. I soldered on the, the ball links and the clevises for that and put carbon rod on it as well. Um, cause that, 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 you know, it's just a lot of pressure on that full flying stab. But yeah, I'll be glad to help you out any way I can, man. I appreciate everything you do for me. But, um, but yeah, guys, I just, I thank you all for being here tonight and hanging with me. I'm sorry I had technical difficulties. I'm sorry I was, uh, echoing, but my wife, thank God she got it fixed. She, like I said, she's my techie. She's good at that kind of stuff. Um, but I just hope all you guys get some good flying in. I think it's supposed to rain here this weekend, but I'm going to Charlotte, so hopefully it won't rain for my son's lacrosse tournament. And we'll have fun. Good night, Brandon. Thank you for coming. And uh, thank all you guys, man. And I thank you all for your kind donations to the channel, man. They just mean so much to me. And I can't tell you from the bottom of my heart how it humbles me that you guys are just doing that for me. Because it all just every little bit helps the channel. And I just thank you guys. And all you guys are, are members. And all you guys are just everything. Captains and crew members and the pilots and the whole nine yards here, man. We're just all having fun. So, uh... Thank you. Thank you for coming, Ray. I appreciate it. What's up, Dennis? This is for you, buddy. <laughs> um, but uh, I hope you guys have a great rest of your Tuesday night. And um, support all your other guys' channels. Check them out. Show the love. Watch their videos. Comment, like, subscribe, share. All that good stuff because we're all here having a good time, man. And thanks for everybody that came tonight. And I will see you hopefully next week. With Dustin right here, same time, 8.30, if all goes accordingly, right here at Flight Club. And you guys have a great week. Take care, be safe, and thank you for coming. Good night. See you guys.